Hello there folks and welcome to another anatomy screencast and this time we're going to be discussing the aerobic system and all three stages of this system. As I mentioned in my previous energy system screencast if you haven't seen the ATP resynthesis cycle screencast it's probably a good idea to start there before you begin with this one and to be honest as a minimum, you'll also need to have gone through the lactic acid system screencast because this relates to the aerobic system and you'll find it a little bit more progressive from that point. For those that have seen the ATP resynthesis cycle screencast, just to recap, when we have the ADP compound present on screen, so adenosine and two phosphates, if we want to restore ATP from ADP, remember we're gaining a phosphate in an endothermic reaction to create ATP with three phosphates and then we're losing the phosphate in an exothermic reaction to create energy for the body or muscle groups and this is the ATP resynthesis cycle. Just to recap again, when we want to add that phosphate to ADP, we're creating that phosphate from the three energy systems which are the ATP PC system, the lactic acid system and today's screencast the aerobic system. The aerobic system therefore provides energy for the resynthesis cycle. It does not provide energy for the body. Please be clear on that and it's the same with all the energy systems. Don't write that statement. Only write that it provides energy for the resynthesis cycle. The main difference between this system and the other two energy systems is that it works aerobically, so we require oxygen for this to function. And not only does it take place in the sarcoplasm, that cling film type substance around the muscle fibre, but it also takes place in another area called the mitochondria, which is a deeper part of the muscle fibre. The fuel storage we need for this energy system to work is two aspects. The main fuel we use is glycogen, so we gain that through food intake or sports drinks such as isotonic drinks, and that's very much the same as the lactic acid system. However, this system can also use what we call FFAs, which is, stands for free fatty acids, so fats. So we can use fats to burn in order to create phosphates for fuel, and this will well, this information will be provided to you probably by your staff member in the classroom as to how that occurs. Both glycogen, once we've ingested food, and free fatty acids, FFAs, are present in the body already, so therefore we can initiate the aerobic system. Now, before the aerobic system starts, the body will always check, and it's the same with any activity we do, the body will always check to use the PC stores first because they're an immediate source of energy. So regardless of if we're standing up or jumping up or throwing anything, etc., if there's low, uh, high levels of adenosine tri uh, diphosphate, so ADP in the body, and if we have any sort of movement, so as I said, if we stood up or threw something or walked, the body will always stimulate creatine kinase to check if there's any PC stores in the body. Now, let's say we've decided to go for a walk, a slow walk, um, for over 10 seconds, then there may now be no PC stores left because we've used them up easily over the 10 seconds. And at that point, because we're walking slowly, it's an aerobic activity, we might be jogging slowly. The body will change from checking that PC stores to use the aerobic system to provide phosphates for the ATP resynthesis cycle. So here we go then, um, this is the exam work you're required to discuss the aerobic system. The critical thing to understand to start with is there's three energy system stages in the aerobic system. We have what's called aerobic glycolysis, which is stage one, the Krebs cycle, which is stage two, and the electron transport chain, which is also known as ETC, in stage two. Three. And whenever you describe the aerobic system in an exam answer, 
it's a really good idea to always make the statement there are three stages in the aerobic system. These are aerobic glycolysis, Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain, because that is what it is. So don't forget to do that. Okay, so again, like the previous screencast, I'm going to give you some diagrams. I'm going to talk it through correctly. A good idea is to draw the diagram and then write a short written paragraph as if you had to do an exam answer to explain this stage. So the first stage, as mentioned, is what we call aerobic glycolysis. Now, if you've done the lactic acid system already, this is pretty much the same. The way it works is the same as anaerobic glycolysis or the lactic acid system. So you'll find it very familiar. So if we're walking for a long, longer than 10 seconds, or we're jogging for longer than 10 seconds, we've got now ADP in the body because we've, we need to provide phosphates for energy. This will stimulate GP, the enzyme, to break glycogen, the food fuel that's stored at muscle groups in the body, into glucose. So just to recap there, high levels of ADP will stimulate GP to break glycogen into glucose. Once we have glucose, the enzyme PFK will break that glucose into the substance pyruvic acid. And once we partially break the glucose into pyruvic acid, we are creating two phosphates to send to the ATP resynthesis cycle in order to create two ATP compounds. Okay, so that bit is exactly the same as the lactic acid system if you've done that screencast. However, this is where it changes. Once we have pyruvic acid, and if we're walking slowly, we're breathing in enough oxygen, so oxygen is the key catalyst here, so if oxygen is then present, what happens is the pyruvic acid is added to a smaller supporting enzyme called coenzyme A. It's not a major enzyme, so you don't need to remember it as a major enzyme, but it's a supporting enzyme. And it's added to pyruvic acid to create a new substance called acetyl-CoA. Again, make sure you've drawn this out very clearly. Go over what I've said and try to design a written paragraph to explain aerobic glycolysis. That's the end of stage one. So we're gaining two phosphates for ATP resynthesis from stage one. Once that occurs, stage two will then fire into action as we're still walking or jogging. And stage two is known as the Krebs cycle. We use the substance from stage one, acetyl-CoA, and we add it to another substance called oxalacetic acid. If we merge these two substances, we create citric acid. This citric acid then enters what we call the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle is a complex chain of reactions, which if you study biology, you'll know to, need to know a little bit more about. But in A-level PE, we just need to know that citric acid enters the Krebs cycle. Once the citric acid is in the Krebs cycle, the complex reactions create a series of effects. And they are these, so these are what you need to know. From the Krebs cycle, we gain carbon dioxide, two phosphates for ATP resynthesis, which is really what we're after to help support the energy cycles, as well as hydrogen atoms. Okay. And the final thing the Krebs cycle will also give us is more oxalacetic acid. The reason that bit's important is because then we can continue to use more acetyl CoA to create more citric acid to then create phosphates again by going through the Krebs cycle. So it keeps this cycle going. Again, make sure you've drawn this out clearly and make sure you can write it into a small paragraph to explain what's occurring. Once we have the hydrogen from Krebs cycle, 
the body can then initiate stage three of the aerobic system, which is called the electron transport chain. You are permitted in the exam to write this as ETC. So that hydrogen from stage two is then added to what we call two molecules called NAD and FAD, or NAD and FAD. Now if we add hydrogen to NAD and FAD, the easiest thing to remember is you just add H's to the end of each of those two items. And so we get NADH and FADH, or NADA and FADA, as I like to say. When we have NADH and FADH, this enters the electron transport chain. So that's quite like the Krebs cycle that bit. And again, we have a sequence of, of events that occur within the electron transport chain. But again, all you need to know is, once NAD, NADH and FADH enter the ETC, this splits the, the ions and electrons. And so we gain a hydrogen plus ion and through that hydrogen plus ion, we create water. So we can sweat out. This is a, a release of waste product once we're running or jogging. And at the same time, we also gain a H, a hydrogen electron, so a H minus. And it's that hydrogen electron that creates a whopping 34 phosphates for the ATP resynthesis cycle. So this stage, the electron transport chain, really does create a lot of phosphates to create lots of ATP compound through the ATP resynthesis cycle. Again, make sure you've written the diagram down and then make sure you can write this into a stable paragraph. If we're then summarising the whole system, so all three stages as a whole, which is what you'll need to do in the exam, we can summarise that as this. This aerobic system is used to create phosphates for ATP resynthesis. So we said that at the start, it doesn't create energy, it's used for ATP resynthesis. We have the three stages, as I mentioned before. Very important to write that when you're describing this system. Aerobic glycolysis is actually the same reaction as the lactic acid system, but remember we have oxygen present and therefore that removes the idea of lactic acid. So because we've got oxygen present, potentially there's no byproducts, certainly in the form of lactic acid. Aerobic glycolysis takes place in the sarcoplasm of the muscles, so that cling film area. The Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain both take place in the mitochondria. So please be aware of that. And therefore, if you're asked where does it take place generally, the aerobic system, it would be the mitochondria because two of the three stages are in the mitochondria. So also be aware of that. The total energy output for this system is therefore 38 ATP compounds. Remember we're creating two phosphates for ATP from aerobic glycolysis, stage one. Two phosphates of ATP, uh, two phosphates for ATP from the Krebs cycle in stage two, and 34 phosphates for ATP resynthesis from the electron transport chain. In terms of byproducts, which is also not on this screen, but please make a note of this, the two byproducts for this energy system are carbon dioxide and H2O, water. All right, that's quite a complicated system to understand. Please make sure you go over this screencast a few times and make good notes. If you need any more support with anything on A-Level PE, please head to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.